Hey there. Good morning. I got to uh, use the uh, horizontal spindle on this uh, milling machine, so I'm going to swing the uh, vertical head out of the way. And you got to be careful. This thing's heavy. So what I do is I crack the, all the nuts loose. <clears throat> I leave one. I'll leave that one just snug. Then I'll break all of these loose. Didn't quite have that snug enough, because that thing's pretty heavy. Okay. You yeah, see, this thing will swing. And one of the interesting things about this attachment is um, you can leave it like that and uh, bring it very close to the table in, the, in this uh, horizontal mode. You can even point this spindle back at the machine. Uh, it, will, it will swing straight out here, but there's nothing to hit the uh, machine. <laughs> so anyway, i got to get this out of the way. I'm going to pull it up like this. And get it right about there. It's pretty good. I'll snug this up. There we go. That's good. Well, I'll show you what's behind there. <laughs> so this uh, this attachment is was uh, before the sliding head brown and sharp now, and they didn't do this uh, uh, for very long. And to run this part, it has a sporing shaft that's back there that slides in and out of here so you can position this and run this head here. So I took that drive shaft out and I got a ER40 collet chuck in here. And I think the last video I made the shank for this boring head. And <laughs> I've got this old attachment. I don't have DRO on here. I don't know if I ever will. But this is called an old Indicol. You remember those? They, they probably still sell those. But this had, uh, I think this is actually just a, a cheap copy of the real thing. And I made all those little brass uh, deals using that uh, turret, tailstock turret on that axle set. Let's see if I could do this with one hand, get it back on there. I don't know, I did. So you can clamp that on there and you can move this in and out and uh, indicate things pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to get this uh, lever in the old vise here and uh, bore this out here so I can put a, oh, an adapter for 7 8 uh, round shaft with an 8 inch key. So I'll do that, then i got to uh, drill out this end here to drill that thing out. And then <laughs> make a handle for that. But this is my uh, old mill machine, and this was a rescue from the first rescue from the salvage yard. This is the first machine I bought from Robert for 500 bucks with the dividing head, totally solid rust. <laughs> And I've got a lot of hours in this. Now this machine here is very low hours and it's very low wear. It, it's almost like a new machine that was just uh, drug out in the weather because, uh, well, the price of real estate and the value of uh, land to do other things here, this part of Washington State. So anyway, here it is, and I'm going to make some parts with it, or fix some parts with it, and uh, just kind of get this going. I uh, haven't used this but a couple of times since I moved stuff around. I, I had this over here in the middle of the floor. It weighs 5,000 pounds, and it was sinking. And uh, I've got it here in this corner, and it seems to be doing just fine. I'll check the level on it real quick and uh, get it going.
Yeah, it's got a chain drive, silent chain. I gotta remember to oil that. This is a number two plain standard World War II mill. Has the warboard tags. Really a great machine, but kind of limited in usefulness in uh, you know today's commercial, uh, commercial market. But it's a great tool making machine. Okay, I'll be back in a bit here. Okay, I think you can see this setup pretty good here. I, uh, tell you what I do. I want to clean out this bore here. It's rough. And I'm going to put a sleeve in there and adapt it. So I want to get this fairly level. And uh, I got this bore through here. It doesn't have to be super precision. I can put this little level on here. And see, it's, it's, it's pretty level right now. I don't know if you can see that. Looking good. And I'm fixturing this part because it's so uneven with the uh, lead ingots. And I don't know if the, if the source of these, uh, a fellow gave me a whole bunch of this he came across, but this particular lead is quite hard. So, uh, I don't know. It might be for making ammunition, I'm not sure. Okay, it's, I've got some other plumber's lead that's in ribbon and it's very, very soft. But this stuff's pretty hard, you know, it makes a little better fit. So I'm going to start snugging this down. And that lead's going to start squishing into that part. It's looking pretty good this way. What I'm concerned is this way. Because <laughs> I want the lever to be straight and I have both ends to do. Okay, it's snugging up. Better check it. Here we are. Okay, it's a little bit high here. So I'm just kind of tapping a little bit. One more tap and I'll do it. That's better. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and tighten it. Kind of go a little at a time, you know. It's starting to snug up. Oh, how are we looking this way? That's looking, that's looking good now. I'm more, <laughs> more concerned with that tilt. Yeah, it's want, it keeps wanting to drift that one direction. That might have been too much if I don't really move. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to find a really good spot on this, huh? Uh, to go down more. Yeah, I'm not going to take a heavy cut here. I have to handle this. This is a real curved vice with a cheap import handle. looking good too. It's just, it really makes things solid. Something about lead works pretty good. How are we doing? It's, it's just almost perfect. <laughs> okay. I think that's good. I'll check it for tightness. Okay. I thought you might like to see my lead fixture and remember uh, this stuff's poison and I wash my hands after handling it. Okay.
looking good. Now let's change the camera angle and we'll get, uh, get that lined up. Well, are you a pretty good shot, Doc? I don't think it's going to get too hot today. Yeah, I don't think it's going to get too hot. Are you hungry? You want something to eat? Let's go see. Let's go see. Uh oh, catching me wiping the machine down with kerosene here. Oh. You know, they made them nice looking back in the 40s. They really did. Hey, I'll show you what I did with the end of call. <laughs> so, I got this uh, old crank handle here fixtured with uh, lead alloy bars, and it's in there good. Got it tweaked in and straight. So I have the Indicol device that was custom modified using that tailstock turret. I made all new brass washers to replace these plastic ones. And the device works again. <laughs> this uh, old machine does not have a digital readout. Though they're so cheap, I could put one on here, but I don't know. I kind of like this traditional, see? Look at that old uh, last word indicator. Showing that that thing's good enough. This is like a, just a cast hole in there. And uh, so it's looking pretty good. And I just want to dust that out, so I'll find a boring bar and we'll see if this material will cut. I will be back quick. Well, I got this 80-year-old milling machine ready to bore a hole. And uh, I ended up going with my heavy uh, uh, 50 taper setup anyway. This, uh, this just wouldn't get it. A little two-inch head, so I got this... Uh, uh, S3 Criterion square head and that's a genuine Criterion carbide bar in there and let's see if it works okay no this machine here uh, where am I at on it um, there's some real gaps in the speed so I have a gap of 700 rpm and 210 rpm <laughs> so we're going to try it at 700 
Got a clean hole. You know what it looks like? Eh? I think so. Yeah, it looks good. I don't think I have to do anymore. All right, I'll make a plug for that and braze it in. <laughs> yeah, this looks good. Well, I think I'll load this video and uh, keep going on stuff. And if I see, do any more, I will video it. You guys have a great day, okay? <laughs>